bodybuilding fans, and welcome back to another episode of Big Bad Bodybuilding. I'm your host, Zach Barnard. With me, as always, Dennis the Big Bad Wolf. Today, we have a German takeover episode. Before we get into that, uh, Dennis, we just we got back from the Arnold Classic a couple week, uh, a couple weekends ago. Tell us about your experience. I can share a little bit of mine, but I think overall it was a success, wouldn't you say? Yeah, hey, Zach. What's going on, partner? Um, yeah, uh, it was very exciting. Um, you know, the uh, Nutrition Wolf line uh, drop was great. Um, I felt like, you know, I was almost as busy as uh, 10 years ago, you know, when I was <laughs> still active. So, and, uh, you know, we met a lot of friends fans old friends and old fans so it was a fantastic weekend and of course uh we we got us great uh tickets to see the show and um, yeah absolutely fantastic weekend and uh yeah we hope we're gonna repeat it next year all right absolutely we're talking about you know trying to book that olympia ticket not to compete but uh to to be at the olympia as well so we're planning on that but I, i'll admit i was like a little kid i mean i've kind of been on the outside looking in all these years and <laughs> competed but you know i was the guy standing in the line to get you know you and our guest picture you know 10 20 years ago and so uh that was really cool i mean i got to interview a lot of uh, great bodybuilders uh people that influenced the industry um some of our friends that we'd uh done podcasts with came by and said hi and and uh, of course all your friends wished us luck on the uh the nutrition wolf line so that was it was awesome it was great to see and uh, it was just a really good time and then to go on rx muscle afterwards and then that was really a cool deal for me and so uh, maybe I'll get to, to get to do my breakdown of the top five next time. I don't know if Dave was ready for that yet. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, it was awesome, man. I, I wanted to just take the mic and go at it. But uh, yeah, nobody probably cares about my opinion as much as yours. So we're going to leave it, leave it there for a while. Oh, but well, anyway, um, we did it. So next, next time we'll make him get you right. on the uh, <laughs> wrap up. <laughs> that's right we'll do our own wrap up how about yeah. that maybe we can get backstage there it's better um better yes i like the idea all right we do want to announce yeah. um on uh, nutritionwolf.com we are going to start a 20 percent discount on by using uh code bbb for big bad bodybuilding that's going to give you 20 percent off your order and for the next week a free t-shirt so you guys go on there get your orders put in that discount code and get hooked up there and i believe there's still some dennis wolf sign shakers if you hurry and get your order in um, we uh, are out there starting to get into stores. We wanna, do want to recognize uh, three that we just picked up. Uh, Ganiac Nutrition in Lubbock, Texas, my hometown on 50th Street. Go by and see Steven over there. Um, Ultimate Nutrition in on Frankfurt Road in Dallas, Texas. Um, appreciate you guys. And then Wholesale Nutrition in Houston on Richmond Avenue. Those three guys picked up uh, Nutrition Wolf in the last few days, so you can go by there. If you don't want to go online, go in there and talk to them and then uh, Get your stuff in a hurry. All right, let's do it. Uh, Dennis, why don't you announce our very special guest today? Oh, yeah, it is also very special to me to have this gentleman here on uh, our show today. Uh, I was a big fan when I started bodybuilding and uh, got into bodybuilding. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he was a lo local, uh, the only local pro bodybuilder. You know, so I mean, there's no chance you cannot look up to this guy, right? So, please welcome <laughs> Günther Schlierkamp, one of the best bodybuilders, not just German bodybuilders, also um, bodybuilders in the world. Uh, very famous um, for beating Ronnie Coleman. So, it's the only bodybuilder who uh, beat Ronnie Coleman in his, in his prime um, after the Olympia. I think it was. Uh, man, I forgot the G show. Uh, how, how we call it? Yeah, the G G GNC show. Yeah, GNC show yeah. strength, right? So yeah. yeah, that was fantastic. So please welcome Günther Schlickam. Uh, yeah, welcome to our show, and uh, yeah, hope you're doing well. Hey, you look great, you. by thank, the way. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me, and I uh, appreciate uh, you bringing me on. And uh, it's an honor to be on the podcast of the, uh, you, that you pretty much just created, I guess, right? Yeah, we've it's, been up and going uh, a little no, bit. I don't know how many you've done yet, but uh, it looks really cool, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, yes, Gunther, thank you for coming on. I'm a big fan. Um, obviously, we had you on. My kind of concept and idea of this episode was to talk to the, uh, you know, and get you guys' opinion on who the best German bodybuilder of all time is. Um, now, you guys are obviously, in my opinion, the best, too. Uh, I know I asked Dennis about getting Marcus Rule on. 
he said Marcus does not do podcasts. So I will uh, oh, leave it at that. <laughs> I don't okay. know. Uh, I haven't talked to him, but obviously, you know, a lot of people and the fans are going to throw him in there. Um, but you guys, I'm, I'm, it's an honor to talk to both you guys. Uh, Gunther, you turned pro at the World Amateurs in 1993, I believe. Is that correct? And yeah. then Dennis what, did the same uh, in 2005. Um, so oh, you guys kind of have dude. that in common. So both you guys got your pro card there from, from what I'm understanding. And, uh, you both did the Olympia the next year. So my first question to you guys is, was that an automatic invite or did both you guys qualify for the Olympia the very next year? It's an automatic qualification. So when you win the amateur Mr. Universe, you are automatically qualified to compete at the Mr. Olympia, at least at the time. So I don't know. I don't think it ever hasn't changed yet though. So I think it's no, still the same. I, I think they did that with the Arnold for a little bit, but I don't think they're doing it anymore. But tell me about that experience for you guys. I mean, you win the world championships, right? So that obviously is an honor. But then, okay, let's go to the biggest show in the world within the next 12 months. I mean, how did you guys take that? Yeah. And were you guys, you know, shell shocked when you got there? Should, should you or should I go first? You want to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go first. Sure. So, first of all, um, well, it was for me a, a reality check. So I I won uh, the heavyweight Mr. Universe and remember Roland Sealock he won the middle you know the the class three and so you were just beneath me but uh, so and then you get qualified for the next year and you think oh great you know you're getting ready for the Olympia oh my God do you know how bad that feels when you literally from 18 year old 18 years old all the way to 23 you win every single show there. Right, you so you have the junior uh, world champion, you have the junior German champion. You win the whole uh, fall season as a, a newcomer. You know, you win the European championship in in the men's division, and your German championship in the heavyweight men's division. And then a year later, in '93, I won the Miss Universe. And then I got to the Olympia, not one call out. I was <laughs> standing there on stage, but that year, Roland, I mean. <laughs> He looked so different from the world championship. He made so much progress. He literally, I mean, it's like, you know, and then he just came on stage and, you know, obviously he was very energetic and stuff. And he knew that he looked great and phenomenal and his muscle quality and stuff, you know, it was just popping everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, what did he do? You know, it's so like, because I didn't, I, you know, Compare, you know, it's like if you're all of a sudden with the pros, you know, first of all, nobody knows you, but also you, um, I didn't make that much progress compared to what I looked at the Mr. Universe. So, and I think, you know, somehow, well, it wasn't enough to just get attention, I guess, from the judges, but Roland that year did. And for me, my God, that was a headbanger. <laughs> I, I, I flew all that flight back home was miserable. I want to interject real quick on that because I remember that. I remember that year in Roland coming up because I was like, who is this guy? And, and of course, I was yeah. a teenager, so I saw that double split in his, his most muscular in his chest. And, of course, I'm like, why is he not top two? You know, I don't know anything at the time. But yeah, yeah, I do I, remember exactly, that year. You know? So I didn't realize that was the year after he turned pro and that you were in that show. But yeah, I, I do. looked insane. You what looked happened? so crazy. What happened to Roland? Because he didn't really stick around He, he gained very well. like 30 pounds in a year or so, at least. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, was ridiculous. It was day and night wow. difference, you know, so... <laughs> Wow, yeah, yeah, so it was crazy. Yeah, it's like, you know, everybody was like, what just happened? You see? I mean, he was definitely, from all people that I've seen a little, he was like, I, it was a huge improvement. It was just mind-blowing. And I said, my God, you know. What happened? So, like, how come he didn't just... go back year after year? He just, did he kind of just hang it up, or did he have health like, issues, man. or what happened? Well, um, well, he actually did come back, but I, I have to be honest. That show, that Olympia, was the biggest, how we say, that attention that he got. And then afterwards, he quite, actually, instead of getting better and making improvements from there, he actually couldn't bring that condition and the improvements yeah. anymore. Okay. So you know what I'm saying. So, you know, and, and I, I get where it is. So, you know, you know how that is. I always say bodybuilding is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So... Also, judges want to see, okay, yeah, he looks great, but let's wait. So he gets a placing, you know, he gets called out, 
but he could do better. But let's see first, you know, he has to pay his dues, right? So then he comes the next year, so they want to see more improvement. So when he comes the next year, oh, he looks almost the same. Then he comes again, oh, not quite as good. And you know what I mean? So instead of going from there and building on that momentum, he they couldn't build more up from that momentum. So yeah. where I came in, I was like, well, no attention at all. Then the next year, okay, I have to do something different. Then in 95, I went to the Canadian Pro Show and, and was right away second. I beat Milos at the show and Ronnie was first. Yeah. And see, but I also looked way improved to the year before in 94 at the Olympia, yeah. you know? And then you gotta also see if you go to the Olympia, you there's Dorian, there's Sean Ray and all this stuff. Actually, Sean Ray looked really good at that show. I almost thought he literally could win the damn show there in 94. Oh, he looked amazing. He was literally was his best condition I've ever seen on Sean Ray. You know, uh, uh, well, yeah, that is, I think, what I believe happened. It's that he couldn't build on that momentum in 94 at the, at the Mr. Olympia to continuously make improvement. So, just... Um to the world championships and uh, uh, a direct qualification to the Olympia. It wasn't um, the rule anymore when I won the uh, world championships and I won the overall title, right? So, so uh, yeah, oh, I, was, really? I was just, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, applying yeah. for my uh, pro card, so or the, uh, the federation did in, in Germany, you know, so, yeah. and then I had to qualify. So it took me three or four shows to uh, get qualified. So, um, I started with the show in Texas. Uh, that was uh, Europa show, Europa show, Europa show, something like that. Uh, I think from Betty Parizo. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, then um, I did three shows and the last show I get the qualification was uh, in uh, Spain. So in Spain, like uh -huh. a week before the Olympia. <laughs> So it was crazy. So I got the qualification, flew back home, packed my stuff, and flew like two days later uh, to Las Vegas. You know, so it was was crazy. Uh, everything was fast. You know, but uh, I think I still think it was one of my best looks. But I didn't get any attention, like you said. It's it was it was just nothing. You know, but I knew it. I don't know why, but I knew it that they're not gonna even you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, it was the same with me because, you know, people, well, even at the time, Walter Clark, you know, who was my mentor at the time, he said that too, don't be surprised if, you know, things don't go your way, you know, and it really happened that way. It was like, okay, you, <laughs> I'm right here. You know, <laughs> like, I'm right here. Yeah, <laughs> difficult times back like then. So yes, weird, I mean, but... Yeah, but I knew it's going to be like that. You know, it's my first Olympia. I mean, I'm, I was 27 or 28, so it was pretty pretty young and, uh, you know, a newcomer uh, to the world, right? Bodybuilding world. So I didn't expect that much, me, but at least, at least, you. Uh, like a good comparison, right? But yeah, anyways, a year later, Gunner, you were there. It, uh, it changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Gunther, you, Gunther, you yeah. were there, right? You competed in that show. I believe you were 10th or so. That was, you know, I believe Did towards the end of the year 2000, yeah. no, 2006, 2006, 2006, six. No, I guess first my first Olympia, yeah. yes. And yeah, oh, yeah, I I took well, you know, that was uh, well in 2006, that was a year when I noticed my body just wasn't, wasn't going the right direction, and I kind of knew it. Well, first of all, I have to say it started kind of. In 2005, um, when I placed four, and you know, Arnold came, you know, you can sometimes say it's a little mental or is it whatever, but um, in 2005, I, it was one of my better conditions. I mean, like I was really as in, in as almost in like 2002 and, uh, you know, so the aesthetic was there and stuff. And it, it was a year too. It's like, well, they placed me fourth, but I didn't get compared to the top three. Ronnie was first, Jay second, and then it was Victor Martinez. I did not get any comparison. And then they put me out in the next three, and I was fourth. I was fourth with never being compared to the top three. So at that time when, you know, I got places, I'm so, 
Arnold came even back saying, he was, Arnold was furious. He came and picked on my chest. Yeah, I can't believe what they're doing. They're going in the wrong direction. You should have been up there. You should have been compared. And I said, well, it is what it is. But um, I, I felt like at that big show, I always had a hard time. And uh, well, for me, it was like, well, maybe, you know, it's a sign and stuff. And I kind of like can tell that uh, going in there year to year, it's like, you know, you you know, at some point he says, you know what, maybe it's kind of time to change a little bit, you know, do something different. And I can tell also 2006, you know, when you try so hard to like, you you, you want to get that drive, the, 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 the determination, and it just somehow doesn't connect. You know, it, it was the weirdest thing. I couldn't get quite into that trap, you know, it, you know, even though you, you feel like you want it, but somehow, somehow, somewhere, you know, it's something in your back of your mind. And I said, well, maybe this should be just it, you know, and that's like, that's how I felt that year. So that's why also it was a total off year for me. But uh, after that, I remember Albert Busek, he talked to me, oh, you cannot leave like this. And I said, Albert, you know what, man, I do this since I like competitive since 18, man. I said, I think it's time, dude. I... You know, I think there are other things in life too for me, you know, and it's like I said, I want to have a family and, and, you know, focus on that and maybe explore a little bit of acting and all this stuff. So, yeah, and that was, that was a year kind of when I said, okay, I have to make a decision. And I remember I would try to talk me out of it and I said, no, this is, this it, that's it. I can tell you recovery is not as the same and stuff, you know, so. Okay. Gunther, what was your uh, top yeah. competition weight? What, what, what was your heaviest? And the heaviest in competition was actually 302 when I beat Ronnie. Okay. So it was it that was show. at the GNC show of strength. Yeah, I still had straight glutes. But oh, I, I was admit, yeah. Really, yeah that the condition was, was insane. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, and it, it, it was really full. It still kind of go a little back and forth. I actually feel like when I was, a, I think I was a few pounds lighter at the uh, uh, Olympia three weeks before, but I felt like, for me, I almost felt like I liked that look a little better than when I was even more full at the GNC show. You know, for me personally, I actually liked the look at the Olympia better when I placed fifth and everybody got mad about it than when I beat Ronnie, is, if that makes sense. Also, that show was for me more important to this day. You know, beating Ronnie is one thing, but I always say if, you know, everybody looks for the moment in life where you want to um, say, you know, the aha moment. You said, that's what you do it for. And that's what I felt at the Olympia. So when you go on stage, you get called out fifth, right? Already all day long, the people were crazy. The booze, said, oh my God, the they, you come out and just scream, they're on their feet yeah. and all this stuff. And then you get out fifth and you literally have to go to the mic to tell them, hey, it's okay. <laughs> what you guys do here tonight makes to me more than yeah. the pacing. What was really that way. I mean, I was on cloud seven. But, you know, I had that moment, the aha moment, where literally from the toe to the back of my neck hair, I mean, it's like every single hair was like standing like this. It was weird, you know. But uh, that was for me the aha moment. And I said, you know what? That's why I did it for. That's, that's what I, you know, for me, there was a time and I said, that's it. That's why I do this for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You I remember kind of watching going you. to the Olympia to win. That never happened. But that was a moment that was in my, for me personally, as much yeah. worth as literally winning the Olympia, you know? I think it's so safe anyway. to say, you know, how now they give out the fa the fans choice award. They do that every year at the Olympia now. I think you would have won that. You and Lee Priest uh, would have won that a few times. And <laughs> I remember, yeah. you know, at home watching, I'd always pay for the pay-per-view, you know, and I remember watching it, um, you know, on pay-per-view. Yeah. And I yeah. remember that year, man, when you had to take the mic. And I, like I say, you and Lee Priest were the two. They're like, people are like just, I mean, up in arms, you know, when you're getting sick yeah, and yeah. everybody it's, wanted it's, you to I, win, I, right? I remember Lee was there too. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah you uh, guys. Lee, so that's he, awesome. He, Lee Priest several times, man. When you see it, it's like, yeah, you know, take away his height, but my goodness, sometimes he looked just spectacular. A eh? you know, it's like it's insane, you know, and it's like, well, you know, he probably has his his, his fair share of 
of comments to a lot of the shows too. You know? <laughs> oh God! Well, he's on a podcast. You know, every other day, he's he's uh, he's still you know his voice is heard just as much as ever. He's uh, he's out there for sure. You know, I, I like that he's very he's very outspoken. You know, oh, yeah. and, and he says how he thinks, and you know, for you don't get any bullshit from him. You know, I I love that about Lee. <clears throat> Got that one to ask you. So you know. Um, yeah. Dennis, we've talked several times about his move from uh, Germany over to Las Vegas when he moved to the States. When did you come over? Um, well, like, when did you leave uh, Germany? I, all right. So, actually, I got, you know, I met a guy in 1996. So, he had a closing line. Um, he invited me because he saw me at the Night of the Champions. And uh, so, he thought I should place much higher. And well, you know, it's like I my English wasn't that good at the time. He said, Oh well, you know, we kinda talked, spent the weekend together. So me and my ex we flew back home and then uh, he said, Oh, you should come out, stay with me a little while and all this stuff and yeah, yada yada yada. <laughs> so we actually went out there to New Jersey, New York in nineteen ninety six, uh kind of during the summertime. What was miserable at the time because uh First of all, we, you know, literally, the guy was kind of a con artist, so we lost a lot of money. You know, we we sold everything at our house, so we, you, you don't have social security, anymore. you could not open up a bank account. So we were literally illegal, sleeping in a factory building where, like, these dogs pooped all over the place, so we oh, bought God. a mattress for, like, a hundred bucks and slept on there for a couple of weeks. My wife didn't talk to me for two, three weeks. None. No And this, this was and after said, you were a pro? Me. This was before you turned pro or yeah, after? Yeah, I was already a pro, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, wow. Yeah, so, but we got invited there. So, he used to have a clothing company that actually, uh, you know, got in trouble. I think, I don't know, maybe I, has, I have no clue. But, uh, yeah, so when we bought the money, so we kind of like, well, and now in all hindsight, it sounds really stupid, but the only shows we saw, we saw we bring the money and we kind of, you know, put it on an account that was in his name. Well, yeah, yeah. we got a, we got a thousand bucks and she saw nothing of anything else <laughs> anymore. Oh, so man. that was a thing. And then, but the good thing that happened during that time for six months, so we stayed there from the summer to literally um, May 97. So the good thing happened, I met Universal Nutrition. I got my first ca contract. So we obviously, uh, you know, jumped all on it. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, at least so far, then, uh, you know, that works out. So we had a little income, even though the other money was gone. <laughs> And we got our own apartment, but then I ran into Ed Connors and said, dude, you got to come out to Venice, to California, got to meet Joe and all these things. And I was like, all right. So we literally sold everything we had and, you know, closed the apartment off that we left out like literally overnight, you know, and then we been to California here yeah, and we stayed for a little bit with Ed Connors and I rented an apartment that normally actually before Mike Matarazzo rented in Venice. And we started uh, our journey in uh, Venice Beach, California. So we stayed there a year. And, you know, obviously you go to Gold's. And I, for me, it was like you're walking into the gym and you see flags in the morning, Paul and Led, Chris doing cardio, getting ready for shows and stuff. I mean, it was a blast. It was awesome, yeah. That was great. That's great, man. So that's how you ended up. So in 1997, I came here to California. But in 96, I was already literally for nine months in New Jersey, Kearney, the worst place I, I don't recommend to go there, Dennis. <laughs> no, New Jersey. Hey, you know, Man, it was we're, so bad, dude. Uh, I'm not an East Coast guy. I me guess. either. Well, we no know, East Jason, Coast guy. No Jason Arntz is a good friend of the show. So we're going to have to, you know, get Jason, Jason Arntz's take on that. He may, yeah. uh, he may have to fight you. If you <laughs> yeah, talking Jason, bad yeah. about Jersey. But um, well, when did uh, the Weeder contract and when did you get involved with him? Because I just remember you being like the face of Weeder supplements for the longest time. So was that yeah, down the road that a little bit? 19, that had to happen 1998. So I did uh, get finally uh, a meeting. So it was funny. There was a, um, a photographer in Venice every single day, Art Zeller. I don't know if you remember him. Art Zeller, he used to shoot Arnold way back when. And he, unfortunately, it was really bad. It, like, uh, you know, literally two years or a year later, he died of cancer, and it was so bad. He was such a great guy. So he always 
literally was with his camera. He was working out <clears throat> with his camera and goes up and just took random pictures of athletes. Like, you know, it's like, let me take a shot, you know? So he took a picture, literally a headshot of me when I was working out and he took it actually to Joe Wiener, to his office. And he said, and the guys, he, he said, well, the next day he came and I said, hey, I saw yesterday, it was over the weekend, I saw, it, I was, I saw Joe, you know? I told him he has to meet you and show him a picture of you. So he wants to, I gave him, I think, a number from Gorge and whatever. And then uh, he wants to talk to you, he wants to, you know, see you. I said, really? So then sure enough, it actually literally happened. He reached out. And then I, I went out to meet Joe literally in, uh, in Woodland Hills. And then, uh, you know, because I've met Joe before, but he didn't want to do any contract with athletes he wanted them available. So when I was in Germany and I came out here to compete one time in uh, at the Arnold's Classic and we did a photo shoot here and then went back to Germany, you know, we had some talks, but he said, uh, yeah, so he would do a contract if I would stay in California or in the uh, U.S. So that was for me a reason then finally also, you know, to go over here and, and start it, to start the whole journey, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, at the time, I, you know, Joe, for him, it was important that he has a be uh, at that time, at least the athletes available for photo shoots and stuff at any time here in California. Did you guys, you guys never did a photo shoot together, did you? I know you were kind of at the end of your career oh, when yeah. Dennis was, was taking off. You guys never did yes, one. Yes, unfortunately. I did, I did uh, a couple with Marcus, but never with Gunter. Um, because I can't believe we didn't get one with all three of you guys. Uh, all three of you, I would have been awesome. I'd just say, in all three, of you guys would yeah. have been great, and oh, yeah, all three of you guys together, everyone there. together for sure. Yes, sure. <laughs> that would be fun, and we can recreate that now, man. I think I think Marcus is a little bigger than both of you guys still, oh, but still, uh, man. maybe still we can make that it. happen, man. Yeah, he's, he's huge. <laughs> I, I see. I just yeah. follow him yeah. on, on Instagram. I said, I can't believe how big he is. He's still yeah. big, yeah. man. Well, no, like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's still big. Yeah, yeah. But hey, I've. Just okay. speaking yeah. for myself, I probably could do that, and uh, that would be too, too stressful for me. And I was like, you know, uh, I I'm not in the same. Uh, uh, I don't I don't have the same mindset like 20 years ago, right, or 10 years ago. So it's not like for yeah. any purpose, right? So I like I like the way I look, so I don't have to be like you know 300 pounds or 280 or 250. So I'm staying around yeah. 220. And I feel great, right? So, but it's like uh, everyone makes the decision for himself, right? So, I mean, it's, it's great if you yeah. can do it, <laughs> absolutely, right? But I, oh, I'm just saying for nostalgia, yeah. it would yeah. be awesome to see you guys train together. I mean, I'm not talking, you know, 500 pound squats and, you know, yelling at each other like you and Evan did in that one photo shoot. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I, if you guys ever yeah. get together to train, and I'll, I'll be there yeah. in video it. All right. Yeah, That'll next, be cool. Next time, it, would be, it would be a light good, workout. You know what? Good to train with me. Yeah. Last time, uh, he came to Vegas at my place here. The oh, Wolf you did? Yeah. You went by Dennis's yeah, place. It was, it was a year and a half ago, right? Yes. Uh, okay. yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It was awesome. Mario was there. We had yeah. fun, man. Yeah. It was great. I like yeah. that little that place out there, man. It was good. Oh, hey. The equipment is really I mean, good, any, too. Any plans I like that, that Mario is coming over any anytime soon? Yeah, he's coming with his uh, uh, girlfriend in May. Nice. Okay. So, he, you know, he has, he has a girlfriend now, and so she's coming, too. So, well, I have to see how the plans are. But you know Mario. He's always adventurous. <laughs> he's always, like, I'm coming along. He's, like, awesome. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see him in uh, two and a half weeks, and uh really exciting about it. And, uh, yeah, let's see what he still can do. I mean, and that was one of the best performers ever, you know, like for stage performances, like uh, – you know, I don't know, Zach, uh, you never see it probably. He does that uh, Terminator uh, breakdance dance yeah. stuff, you know. Who are we talking about now? Uh, Mario. 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 Uh, it's it's Gunther's friend, and he is doing um, a guest <laughs> appearance at my show in uh, two and a half weeks. Uh, that is what oh, Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've seen it. All right. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, he's, be a, cool. he's, a, he's a great performer. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Awesome. Before yeah, we... he's very artistic. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, yeah. Gunter. Before I wanted to get your thoughts on on the current bodybuilding situation in the scene, but before I do, um, earlier you were talking. I just wanted to get a uh, 
you could give us a sneak peek. And uh, um, so you're really happy with your performance, 2002, Mr. Olympia. But you did say you weighed up that you were at 302 when you beat Ronnie. What did you do between those two shows to, like I said, I know you were probably happier with your Olympia look. But what pushed you over the edge well, diet-wise? What did really, you do to fill out? It, it's really, uh, well, quite simple, you know. It's like, so before, when you when you always diet, you know, you do the pleading and all these things, right? And then you cop up. Well, in my history of competing, every time, when I started carving up, I looked better, literally, a couple of days after the show. I never could really fall, get full. So, and then for the GNC of strength, after now I was in like excellent condition at the uh, Olympia. So I started carving up and, you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, and I couldn't, could hold my condition like really for that long. And then I just did a little bit depleting in the last week again and cut up, but I wasn't as depleted as I was before the Olympia. So that kind of kept me the whole time much fuller, you know? So that is literally what I did. I was more cut up than at the Olympia for that show. Now, I hear of Dennis's amount of carbs he takes. Carbing up for you, how many carbs a day is that to fill out your 300-pound frame? I mean, what are we talking about here? I mean, and was it rice? Like, was it rice cakes? Was it potatoes? Yeah, well, it was. It was quite a bit of everything. I mean, it was oatmeal, rice, and I have even like the apple sauce, yep. you know, and uh, stuff, things like that. So I did have the all I had complex carbohydrates and also had simple carbs. So I, I don't know, man. I would say, actually, well, eight hundred to a thousand carbs grams of carbs at least, you know. 800 grams of carbs to a thousand so every couple that, hours every couple period. hours you're just you're just no, kind of yeah, well doing the, over the day you know yeah so, right 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 spread out okay but, you yeah. see sometimes well, even, I just want to say even, even if you're uh bigger you don't need so much carbs like so many carbs like um in some situations like i did in 2007 you know so i was eating over a period of two and a half or three days like yeah five thousand of car grams of carbs you know so yeah, it's 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 yeah. crazy, right? So and I was what, maybe two sixty five to sixty eight, and also yeah. So if your metabolism is working, hey, damn, it's it's just running through. Like you know, you're just throwing what? some yeah, some what? some wood in the in the in the in the fire, you know. So <laughs> it just burns more. That's it. Yeah, it just burns. Well, especially if you do the pleading days, you know, and. You know, people always say, how do you not get fat? And I said, well, if you're already depleted in your diet and you have, uh, you, uh, you're already under your daily, you know, uh, intake of calories, so you're kind of slowly depleting your body already, you can eat for three days as much food as you want. You don't get fat in three days. It takes literally three days until your body starts converting too many carbs into body fat. But that with us will never happen because you top up and then you go, if there's another show, you know, you kind of like slow down and stuff like that. So you never get really over that four day period where your body takes the carbs and you turn every, like it slowly starts converting too many carbohydrates into body fat. So it's a 72 hour process, you know? So they said, well, I can eat, but I'm already depleted and I deplete three more for three days or two days. My body needed only two days. And then I start carving up for three days. I can eat as much as I want. I don't get fat in the time. You know, and it's not happening <laughs> because, like you said, the metabolism is so fast and the muscles grip, they grab everything, you know, and it literally is a process that takes that long to really get that full, you know. Gunther, did you did you use a coach during that period? I'm just curious. I know Dennis used a few over his time, but back then it wasn't really a thing, was it? Did everybody kind of do their own thing or you just didn't well, hear about it as much? I, uh... Well, I worked there for the Miss the Universe with Detlef Herget. You know, you yeah, know yeah. Detlef Dennis, yeah, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And so I and Walter Clark, they were actually there for me and they they kind of straightened my diet even out for the Mr. Universe. Um and then I did actually a lot of the diets on my own. <laughs> and and especially also there was one Iron Man where Milos even talked about Man, your condition, it was like, what, 2000, I think, Iron Man, and I also went to the Arnold. It was one of my best conditions, actually. Pierre Bernard took, like, some black and white picture. I mean, it was just shredded. The condition was amazing. But also, it was a different diet. I tried a blood type diet. 
So my my ex wife she actually looked into that, and uh, we kind of um, you know got interested in this. Okay, I'm blood type O. You know, it's a lean mean hunting machine. You can say that. So we are normally meat eater, high fat, high uh, and high, high fat, high protein. So and I kind of actually minimize mm-hmm. that. Only certain carbs I looked at. What carbohydrates are good for my blood type? Oh, so and I did that diet. And actually, it is tough to do because I always was used to eating more carbs in my diet, and then all of a sudden you don't. But once that process kind of keeps rolling, and your body starts. Man, I was just like, my body was just burning up, you know, and uh, it was in 2000, I did the, uh, 2000, the Iron Man, people were so fast, that was also when sharks came back in gold and they said, dude, who did you diet, man, you look great, I said, I did it on my own, but uh, then after that, um, when in I was competing at the uh, Olympian, yeah, no, I was going to say was in 2002, two- did you use the high fat diet or were you on more of a traditional carbohydrate diet? No, in 2002, I worked actually with Chad Nichols. Oh, okay. So that's when I, and uh, you know, I always, I started with one chance already working uh, in the gym. It's for me, it was like, I didn't want to think about anymore what exercise to do. I just want to go to the gym and train. I said as hard as I can. So that's why me and Charles got together and Charles actually started talking to me because he was so impressed with my condition, the diet that I did in, uh, in 1999 or 2000 there for the Ironman and uh, the Arnold's Classic. And then, so we got, we said, well, I, Charles, I always want to ask you, said, would you be interested in working with me? I want to bring up my back. My back felt like could be more improved and stuff. And it's, oh yeah, sure. And then a year later, in 2001, I think it was the first time that I started working with Chad Nichols and I worked with him until, uh, I would say, what was it, 2004, 2005 maybe? So it was, uh, you know, the time doing Chad Nichols, so working with Chad Nichols. Nice. Um Hey, let's talk about like current, the current state of bodybuilding. Um, how involved are you anymore? I know I don't see you around a lot of stuff. You said you had mentioned you went to the Arnold a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, you know, well, it was, uh, well, it's quite, quite a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I have to say it. Um, do you still follow the sport? Ask me that why I'm not doing my thing. First of all, it's like, well, I've seen so many stuff, you know, me, you know, my wife and I, we kind of are entrepreneurs. We have our own, uh, we have kettlebells, they sell really well. So we have all our own home equipment line. It's called Bionic Body Gear. Oh, it's nice. selling in, you know, in the Midwest and stuff and in a lot of stores. And it's even on Amazon and all the stuff, you know. And then, uh, you know, we also, in the between, we had some bars and all this stuff. They were in GNC stores. So we kind of had all a few things going on, but I, I have to say, you know, it's like, I never, I never felt like I the need to be still in the sport. I, I, I look at it this way that I think, well, I'm probably was always more the athlete instead of the businessman in the sport. You know, I, I, for me, it was like, for me, I, I like the competitive side of it. And for me, going into the sport or hosting like others, I mean, if I you think about it, almost everybody I compete against is, is still in the sport doing something, you know. Dorian, I don't know. Dorian, I see him on and off. But, oh, uh, Dorian is, uh, uh, you he's know, he's got doing... his uh, nutrition line and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, uh, you know, Jay obviously has this is nutrition line. He's always around the shows and stuff and Kevin and, and uh, uh, Sean Ray and, you know, they, it seems like they are all still doing it and say, like, for me, it was okay. I, I I didn't feel the need to be still involved. I, I put it this way, you know, even though I love the sport, I train four times a week and I just lifting and, you know, kind of watch uh, most of the time what I eat, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. you and Dennis have both done a great job of slimming down, looking healthy, uh, you know, like we mentioned, Marcus, I mean, I, I know at that age, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to be that big, you know, and, uh, you know, you guys have both done a good job of looking healthy. And I think what most, you know, retired pro bodybuilders should do. I mean, I think you guys are, you know, a great example of that. So I think you look yeah. great. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, you got it in, in, in bodybuilding. I mean, it's like nutrition is the, is the first part of, you know, that you have to attack. It's literally it comes all down to that. You can be the best worker out of, but if you don't eat uh, uh, for your body or your type or, 
if you don't eat the right nutrition for you, you will know you don't go anywhere, you know. So nutrition is always one of the most important things I've learned. There's a lot of people who can work out, can get big, they are stronger than you are, you know, but then again, can they diet like you are? You know, that is where most of it comes yep, down, absolutely. you know. It's like, can people be disciplined and diet as hard as you do? It's like working out, it's actually more the easy part, almost, I feel like. It's always you know? been. I mean, to, <laughs> to me, right now, eating is the, the hardest part, you know? So I basically need to eat more. So, but also I, I uh, figured if I just add another meal, you know, a day, I go up, you know? I mean, I look more round right away. But uh, the thing is, I cannot keep it, you know? So... I'm probably going to eat, you know, you know, like eating in one meal extra. So for two, three weeks, and then I'm going to go back on my three meals a day again. So I'm kind of going up and down, you know? So, and of course, it, it yeah. still, still kind of <laughs> stresses me a little bit. If I, if I have to think about eating next meal and, you know, checking the time. So this, this is, you know, what I don't like, you know? So then, then like I said, if you are, yeah. if I have to add another meal, so I have to, kind of have the same almost the same mindset watch the clock when is my next meal blah 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 and this is like you know gets me right into that again you know so and this is what i actually don't really like anymore you know <laughs> yeah yeah well actually my, my wife came she was uh she gave me so long this time crap about it you know so when i literally you know you gotta understand when, when i stopped competing do you know that for, for literally a year, I hold on to two, what was it, 290? I was still keeping 290. Yeah. Then all of a sudden I went to 285. Then I went down to like, you know, but it was over a pre period of literally years that I slowly like five pounds almost a year, you know, and uh, now for some reason I'm stuck at like 250. Yeah. 250 is like, I still weigh 250, you know, and it's so funny. It's like, I, I don't look that heavy, but I still, and I, I, I'm, the, trust me, it's not, I'm not doing anything. It's like, just eat kind of similar normal. I try to keep my protein high and stuff. I actually have to take some essential amino acids uh, to just make sure I have enough protein and building blocks for the muscle, you know, but for, like I said, because that, I used to be like that, you know, when man, it's like, oh, yeah, I gotta yeah, eat yeah. every three, I do not have a man, I'm not even gonna eat this. Like, my wife would drove her nuts, even when I wasn't competing anymore. So, finally, it took me literally like 10 years to get the top <laughs> of my head a little bit. And now I don't worry so much. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's right. It's like, you gotta, it's so hard to consistently eat the food, it's yeah. a job. It's a little job, agree, you know. Man. That was one of the main things. I think things. that's why, like, you know, after I retired, that was the first thing I got out, you know. So that's why I, uh, you know, lost the weight. Not that quick, but also, like you said, almost over a period of like four years, you know, I was coming down. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you bet. I didn't like it. I didn't like the look. But then after a month, two, you kind of get used to the look. And it's, oh, it's, it's not bad, right? So then the next year, drop a little bit more. Uh, so it wasn't, even if I wanted, it wasn't going that quick, right? So, I mean, maybe yeah. for myself, you know, in the mirror, I was not the same, right? I mean, even uh, back in the days when you were uh, still competing, if you if you have lost like 10 pounds after an expo, right? Like fever or so, you always be losing so much weight. Oh, yeah. Oh, my you, God. I mean, you, you felt <laughs> terrible, right? So you, you couldn't even uh, look at you in the mirror, right? So that was kind of the same right so I, I still had that in my head so but like i said after a couple of years i um i got used to it and i like that more because i just feel it it's just you know everything what i do is easier and i don't stress myself so and the yeah. first thing to you know yeah. i was stressed about this was food food right so every three hours you have to eat now it's like yeah all right so but still it's like yes. it, it's it's like uh bipolar right in your head so you you, you need to eat you, you don't want you don't like to eat but you have to eat right so it's like what the hell is being <laughs> yeah i know it is ridiculous well it's like you know what you're talking about is like feeling better i can tell that you know my my body feels good where it is right now so it seems literally like 
250 is like the weight where my body is like, well, I like this, you know, because at some point, you know, if you try, if you get older and you try to keep up the weight, you got to deal with other things, blood pressure, joints and all this stuff that will come. I mean, we pounding our bodies and you got to got to say, but we that extreme sport that we do for all these years, there's something we'll give later or sooner. I feel my knee, not that my knees are hurting, but they're tight. Yeah, you know of what course, I mean? Like almost course. like 80. So every time you do leg workout, you have to stretch your hips a little as bit course. more and all this as stuff course. because, you know, you as look course. at it this way. First, you go like this, your, you know, your hands, everything goes like this. And all of a sudden, when you get older, you get like, they get off like, that's a tendon. Oh, they pull everything pull together. Yeah, and you go like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same. Like my, my hand, all up there. Yeah. So I need to be careful when I work out. So I don't squat anymore. You know, I don't do like good mornings or deadlifts. Yeah. things like that right so but i still love to train i love yeah. to pump and uh I, of course the look when i'm pumped i mean it's still it it's, still gets me it's right in like, a, shit. so <laughs> it's in the blood yeah. <laughs> it, it's in the blood well you know it's like you know also feeling better i look i haven't skied my whole life dude i skied at 52 the first no time way. yeah oh, wow. almost <laughs> like two Two years ago, yeah. And then this year we went up to Canada, actually. Whistler was great, man. What a great town. So but we went with some friends of ours. And, you know, it's like I wouldn't have done that when I was uh, competing in 300 pounds, trust What's me. Oh, but, no. you know, it's like, you know, I, I kind of like got the little hang of it, you know, and that, you know, it's fun too. You, you won't touch bit, anything but... what could damage you or get you in a, like, injury or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So... Well, well, you know, that is, that is the thing. You know, it's like when my whole life I looked at it, okay, I can do this. I can do that. It's like, why I can't do it? Because, well, yeah, Arnold brought, uh, he, he broke his steam when he was governor. It didn't happen when he was, but he also, I heard when he was competing, he wasn't skiing, but he learned how to ski as a kid oh, already. It's different. Okay. So, but the thing is you just break a foot and I met too many people who broke a leg or anything. So no one made you compete. You're like, want to do the Olympia? You're like 280 pounds, man. You break a freaking leg. That is You're done. for a year. <laughs> and you never know if that literally comes yeah. back. Yeah. And you don't know if it comes back in the way it should be, you know? So that is, a, that is the thing where I say, mm, you know, I, I was actually really uh, lucky. I always was really good. I had a good mind-muscle connection. So every time I had a pull in my hand, right, oh, I backed off really lightweight and then all of a sudden all of a sudden a couple of weeks later i said hmm, actually feels good you know i did my stretches and all this stuff you know massage or whatever and they said i think i can attack it now and then i could go but i you know that's why i also was never a fan of with with painkillers you know i remember in the past there were a lot of people constantly working out on painkillers and i said well how does it help you? What is it? Well, well, how can you feel the limit, right? Well, you how can you feel it, right? So the, you, you got yeah, this feeling, you, right? You, yeah, you don't feel the limit, and all of a sudden you hear just a yeah. pop and Absolutely, done work, yeah. you know? So, and your body, your symmetry is off, you know? You to a bicep, you got to fix it, or. Ah, you injury know, is never so good, yes. Especially in bodybuilding. I mean, this is all yeah. visible. That That's why, yeah. It, there we go. There we go, you know? It's. Man, I think you guys are just going to start comparing injuries pretty quick. I want to jump in on this because I've got a few, too. I'm, I'm probably the only one here that's got a knee replacement. I do have a knee replacement from squatting, so I've got you guys beat oh, there. Do? Oh, yeah. It's at yeah, 40. They didn't want to give it to me because, like, you know, 40 years old. But, I mean, it was done. There's no cartilage left there. So, anyway, you guys oh, wow. can at least, at least appreciate you got your knees, right? Yeah. Um, but this is turning into, like a, like, a retro episode, which is great. One thing I want to ask, and then I got a game. You know, Dennis, I want to have a game for oh, us. Yeah. It wouldn't be an episode let's, unless let's I had the, done, the, the meathead trivia. <laughs> uh, yeah, but one last question. Uh, uh, Dennis, when you – this was kind of a, a changing of the guard as far as – but I know um, when I think of you, Gunther, I th always think of, like, the uh, the old videos and the uh, – what is it, the Battle for the Olympia videos. How many of those were you on? And Dennis, they were good. Did, did, you were never on one of those, right? It kind of phased out, or did you ever do a training video, Dennis? Uh Look, yes, I, I did a uh, training video, the first one, uh, when I just turned pro. And then uh, the next one would be a set, when I signed with BSN, that, that huge country, when I came to the uh, United States. But uh, Battle for Olympia, I filmed once with Mitsuru, 
like the the, the original okay. owner, mm -hmm. right? He he didn't he did all of them, yeah, right? Yeah, or no? Did it change hands later? Him, and uh, okay, I think once with uh, the new owner um, after that's that's that was it. Uh, I, I might be wrong. Maybe I filmed two two times with uh, Mitsuru, but I I actually don't remember. I remember 2007 for so sure. But then he moved to uh, Japan after that. Why did it fade out, actually? Because I thought the Battle for the Olympia was oh, a great incredible. thing. Oh, it was amazing. Really... No, Mitsuru, Mitsuru, oh, it's no, got to be the internet. And he moved back to Japan. It was the internet, so sold, right? Uh, his because you can watch videos. <laughs> yeah. YouTube and videos started, right? And then you could just watch these guys whenever they wanted to post and all that. But back then, I know growing up, I couldn't wait to get the video in the mail, right? Because you were going to watch it and see. Of course, this was after the Olympia was over, but it was kind of the same as the magazines. You had to wait almost to see, you know, the pictures you know, and the placings yeah. till after the fact. But I think that had a lot to do with it. I mean, wouldn't you say? But, God, man, Gunner, I remember watching you on those videos, man, at Gold's Gym. And I don't know how many of you were on, <laughs> but, dude, no, I remember those. Remember those were awesome, man. Coming in there and then, then, oh, yeah, man, that was awesome. Uh, dude, I'd be watching that like you 11 o'clock I mean? at night and go to the gym. I, I got to go train right now. You know, those were great. Back on the VHS, I had yeah, the VHS I, tape. You know, I always wanted it because I was literally thinking about that uh, like a couple, oh, it was not that long ago, a couple of days ago, because I was like, you know, it's like, what happened to those Battle for the Olympia videos? You know, because, well, I think for athlete it was great because you could uh, buy them for really cheap and then, when you do appearances, uh, how many yeah. people came and said, "Oh man, I want yep. that video," you know, it's like, and you could sell it there when you're at the booth and stuff. Would you, you, know? would you sign the sleeve? Would you sign the cover? Yeah, for yeah, sure. What, what, yeah, yeah. Uh, hell yeah. yeah, that's awesome, man. man well, great, times, awesome. great. Yeah. old school. Uh, guys, we're gonna take a quick pause from the podcast to check in with Rodney, our formulating specialist over at Nutrition Wolf. He's gonna give you some information and breakdown on this week's feature product. Focus Fuel. Hey guys, Rodney here with Nutrition Wolf. Just want to go over one of our products, Focus Fuel. Focus Fuel is a low stimulant cognition and focus products. So if you're looking for something that's low stimulant, if you want to train that mind, you don't want a bunch of caffeine in your system before you go train, Focus Fuel is a great product. We have compounds like Lion's Mane, Alpha GPC, and Uprazine to enhance memory and cognition, but at the same time, dig with low levels of caffeine, so you're not up all night. What's really also cool about it is we incorporated some nitric oxide compounds in it, like l citrulline at six grams. So if you want something that's gonna give you a really good focus and a really good workout and hydration and pump, focus feels for you. This is just one of our products. If you'd like to check us out more, check us out at nutritionwolf.com or check us out on social media. All right. Yeah. All right, Gunnar, I know you said you haven't watched one of our episodes, but I've got a little bit I do called uh, Meathead Trivia. All right, so we're uh, all right. this one's going to be the German Juggernaut edition. All right, so we're going to go, these first few, we're going to go back and forth. We're going to give uh, uh, Gunther the first question here. And if you beat it, we got some shirts. No, I think all I have is a double X. I don't think Gunner's going to fit in that one well, either. I'm going to get some triple oh, X's, man. Double, double X fits now. Double X? I used okay. to have five or six right. X. Well, if you, if you beat Dennis, then I'll send you one. Uh, all right. Okay, all right. So let's get started. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to start with Dennis. Dennis gets the first all question. Right. All right. Uh, Dennis, Dennis, who has more top six placings at the Mr. Olympia? You or Gunther? Me. How many? Shit. Uh, eight. <laughs> that's tough. Eight. And yeah, it was eight. Very good. Very good. Gunther had four. Oh, that's good. But Gunther, there yours were. Go. I think they were back to back though. Gunther, when you did yours, once you hit it, your prime and your stride, you were top. You know, five or six for what four years in a row, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. He yeah. doubled you up on that one. All right, Dennis. Good job. Yeah, I, good I, might, job. I might point out Dennis is only one one of these. Yeah. So uh, you know, <laughs> we, less, I he needs. I had to throw him an easy <laughs> one there. All right, to get started. Okay, uh, all right, Gunther, in 2004, the Arnold Classic, you placed fourth. Name the three bodybuilders who placed it ahead of you at that competition. Oh, wow. 2004, Jay Arnold. Chris. Jay Chris is one and two. Who was number? Who was third? Chuck, I am not there. Uh, I think he knows it. Come on. Ah, what's going on? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> 
Dexter? <laughs> yes, hey, correct. That is nice. correct. <laughs> Very good. That's impressive. All right. It was Jay Cormier, uh, and then Jackson, and then you yourself. So yeah. very good. All right, oh, one to one. Those three. All right, all yeah. these guys. <laughs> That's great, man. I'm trying to think. They're all still. Uh, it was yeah. fun, man. I enjoyed it. That's it's great. Fun. All right, Dennis. 2005, the year you won the world amateurs. What future Olympia star won the middleweight class at that contest? Ah, uh, come the on, show you turn pro. Who won the middleweight? Yes, it was correct. Very good. Two for two. Yeah. Come on, won it. See it. Okay, Gunther, you got better. And now I'm going to change this up. <laughs> this is going to be tough on Gunther because we had talked about Roland Zerlock earlier, so that was going to be the question to you. But you clearly already know the answer. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pull oh, an audible here. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm screwing you. Uh, uh, I told you I gotta I gotta get Dennis a W here, man. He's really <laughs> struggled with these with these uh, these competitions. So all right, how about this? Ninety three. That's the year you won the world amateurs. What bodybuilder um, placed second to you in the heavyweight class? Right behind you. It was. There, what, still, yeah. There yeah, you go. Yeah, all right. right. I'm, I'm impressed. You got it. Oh. Now let me ask you: At that show, was there an overall winner, or, did, or no, just the class winners? No, they, that was uh, actually they didn't. They it, they tried to get rid of that actually the overall, yeah. Okay, because I was looking to see who won the overall. In different categories, so. And, but everybody and, turned pro at that that division or yeah, whatever yeah. to win their division. Okay, now when you turned pro, Dennis, did you have to win the overall, or did all the class winners uh, look, get I, a pro um, card? There was a little bit different, so they they've been changing the rules every every season, so. Right, so that was the time. <laughs> so uh, there were uh, a couple of athletes. They were not even a German champion. They got the pro card. I don't know why the fuck they get that. So I win the German championships overall, and they tell me I have to go to the world championships and place top five. Then they will apply for me. Mm. Yeah. Okay, it... and you just took the whole damn thing. Well, you said, well, screw y'all. And, and didn't Marcus, Marcus Ruhl never went to um, uh, Mr. Yeah, Universe. he won the German I saw uh, that. championships, but got beaten by a lighter uh, athlete in the overall. You know, but, but yeah, I remember. And then, and then he, but, but he got his yeah, strong yeah, card. I, I remember but he the, got his um, that was card. just a rule. And, and they told me I have to, I, at my time in 93, they told me, well, you know, it's like you got to win the Mr. Universe. And uh, you know, well, the European champion wasn't good enough, yeah. or the, the uh, you know German championship so wasn't enough. They've been changing the rules for uh, quite some time, but, you know. So and, uh, that's ridiculous. I, 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 the, the rumors they will say like, man, we we cannot send that that like you know mountain of muscle to a, a world championship. They gotta say like, what the hell is this, you know? So they they give him the program. Yeah. I mean, you look like a oh yeah, the radio. natural show, so, right? I mean, the, the the drug tested uh, the world championships, right? Yeah, it was uh, practice. And, yes, yes, I remember with Mark. Well, yeah. well, see, I I did that too from every show that was international <laughs> that I did till the pro level was drug tested. Yeah. Every single show I did. That's so crazy. anyway, but that was it. That was at the, the times, you know, it yeah. was the way how it is, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I have a question. Who else was in 1993 in the heavyweight world championship lineup? Well, Placed in the final. I, are you going to ask this? Though. Ask this to, Pro. oh, I, I, I'm cheating. I got it pulled up. So I know. Let's see if Dennis knows. I mean, he it was, was pretty it good. Was we talked Coleman. about having him Ronnie on the show. Coleman was a world champion, the last American world champion. You know what? There was a Ron Coleman that placed in the light heavies. Remember a guy named Ron Coleman? It was not Ronnie. It was another guy named Ron Coleman. I think yeah. he placed second. But I know who you're talking about. Good there. We're gonna have him on the show pretty soon, man. He's a big boy. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. man. Actually, uh, nine, nine, what is ninety three? Right, we're talking about John John Pierre. Oh shit! Right. John Pierre. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's well, he's gonna yeah. come on with us. And and you know, had him on here. I remember when he he went and I think he won the next year. Yeah, yeah. But he Great was another man. one when he came from the amateurs to the pros. Yeah, oh, he was God, crazy. Man. It was sure, unreal. Yeah. Unbelievable. It was unreal, man. That's nice. Unreal. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. Hey. Great, yeah. Great that you remember. Yeah. What year did he play? Uh, what what did he placed that year? Like third or fourth, I believe, in the in the world. Fourth. I think yeah. he was fourth here. Yeah. Okay, here, we'll move on to the next yeah. question. This one's open. I'm going to yeah. let both of you guys give a guess. 
so uh, Marcus is not here, but he did come up. How many times did Marcus place in the top six of the Mr. Olympia? Both of you guys get a guess. Top six. Yeah, what does it mean to you guys? I can tell you that. One time. One time. What do you got? What do you got, Gunther? Yeah. Oh, wow, that is hot, man. Two? Dennis got it. It was one. Was it he... was one time. So one time is one correct. One time? And it was, I think he was fourth in 2004. No, fifth. Um, so, yeah. Fifth. Fifth? Okay, fifth. Fifth, 2004. All right. Yeah, you think of him. I mean, he was around. Wow. I mean, he had that big Night of Champions win. You know, I think he had two pro wins. That big Night of Champions is always what he was remembered for, oh, right? Yeah. Coming he out so this incredible, shock in man. the world. He was pretty freaky. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, with his with his shape and everything, I was just, I mean, I guess he was never going to crack, crack, you know, the top, you know, the really top of the top. But uh, You know, you yeah. know, it is it is really interesting, but what is, do you, you know, do you do you know do you do you understand sometimes what makes them actually pick one and over the other? Do you know I was what it is? You would tell me. No. I'm sure you have more insight than we do. <laughs> I well, I know this one thing. There is one consistent thing over the years. Is always you gotta be tight when you turn around. Marcus could blow anyone away when he came on stage and he does that muscular pose. I mean, there was like. I wouldn't even try to compete yeah. against that. I mean, it's like, it just was like a building yeah. block. It's like, you know, and, uh, but there was one thing always I noticed, and he turns around from the glutes, hamstrings up to the back. He was all, he was never really crisp. Yeah. He, he was always, there was always a layer of water. Mm -hmm. And I noticed through history of Mr. Olympias and all this stuff, when you turn around, you got to have a back. You yeah. gotta be dialed in at that part too. You gotta yep. look from the yep. front, the part. You gotta look from the back, the part. You know. You're right. I mean, all and, the Mister uh, Olympias have had great know, backs. You, you, huh? Oh yeah, you're correct. Yeah, I mean, all like, the Mister you know, Olympias you know what I mean? have great it's like backs. That, that dense, that the density, the crispness. So look at Dorian. My goodness. Yeah, that's what you know, he for was him. the same thing, but he was like a little, like a, like a. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a rock, man. He pulls it back in the striations and all this stuff. Right? To, to get the... into that condition, you need to suffer. You need to drop more than you are yeah. ready to. You know, so it's like an extra 10 pounds. You got to, you know. You know, there was many times that I was like, I, I, you know, you know how many times you're in a gym, right? You go and you do chest, you take your shirt off and everybody's like, holy shit. You know, that is like the best I've ever seen, right? Well, yeah, you turn around, it's like, mm, you know, you feel your little, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the back, the back is, is no. also, uh, I mean, most important. I even think uh, about the recent shows. I mean, you're, you're noticed like, <clears throat> like Hardy, right? So he is like in shape everywhere, right? So, but of course, um, you know, the, the, uh, the longer it goes, maybe you know, some uh, get better in shape, like like I did. You know, after Olympia, the shows I did, I improved every time. But some, uh, some some yeah. athletes got worse. Well, well, and that's that's it, 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 that's what it comes down to. So when you compete, right, the people who come right away and impress, and then you know, and you feel like you know, okay, and then but from year to year after that. Instead of getting better, they are kind of declining. You know, well, I felt like that was part of this with John Pierre Fuchs, you know, when, when he came on the pro level. Dude, he, I was like, where does he go from here? That's why I always say, you know, it's like it's a marathon. So I don't think nobody is willing to give you at the very first beginning, boom, boom, wow, you, you, you win everything. You know, you gotta pay your dues, and I and I was and and with John Pat too. It's like his best condition ever I've seen. I think was I thought actually he could have beaten. Uh, was it NASA? Was it not nineteen? When did he compete? Nineteen ninety seven or eight at the Olympia when he looked so spectacular. That was ninety seven. I thought in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. He looked spectacular. My God, yeah. he. I mean, everybody was standing next to him. He, it was like, unbelievable. And I said, like, how does he come from an amateur like that? But from that point on, I felt like he uh, he never bring, bring brought that condition again. 
you know, and I think that's where I think the problem is, you know, it's like, but you continuously, I saw your improvement, even being not around and I followed it, you know, online, I saw how you improved, you know, and I said, you know, the one year, um, you, your best placing was in yeah, the three, yeah, third place, Olympia. Yeah. See, and 13. I saw a wall. I actually think you could have even that year done yeah, better. Yeah, hey, absolutely. I, I be I mean, honest. And I think, you know what year that was? I put it, I thought it was a year like it was with me in 2002. You brought it on. You were right there. But the people in front of you, they kind of like, eh, not 100%. <laughs> yeah. But they yeah. still kind of had something going for them. And I saw that it was in 2002. I said, if you looked at anybody on that stage that year, they, there was nobody 100% in condition. And Ronnie mm. wasn't. Ronnie came back the next year. Yeah, he was like, he blew everybody away. But in 2002, there was his best by far, yeah. not his best. And that's when he was beatable, you know. But, you know, you got to be at your best and better to... You know, be, be a guy like that. Everything you know? works out as as your plan, as you want it, and just you know, at, at like that weekend, like in 2013, uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, Friday and Saturday, I didn't change at all. You know, no uh, weight change, no water drop or or pools or whatever. So I looked the same for two days. So I mean, it it should be this way, you know. So it just worked out everything more than hundred percent, you know. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes you just need to be. Yeah. You know, waiting maybe for yeah, that, that show. You looking, <laughs> yeah, that show that look at you. You were incredible. Thank it was you. awesome. Thank you. Good. Oh, oh nice. man, this is awesome. Listen to you guys talk. We're, we're, we got one more question uh, left, more. but man, if you guys are going to keep yeah. giving this, this is great, man. I'm just going to let you guys go. Uh, <laughs> but we are. We got one more. This one uh, we're going to do uh, first person to answer. All right, right now we got Dennis in the lead oh. by one. All right, guys, whoever answers this one first, what German bodybuilder has forever been immortalized in a very important bodybuilding trophy that is still awarded to this day? What German uh, bodybuilder? successful bodybuilder of all time. First name, Dennis. Eugene. Dennis got it. Eugene Sandow is the Mr. Olympia trophy, so he got it. He is German. Eugene, Eugene Sandow. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah Sandow, no, Sandow. Sandow. This guy, uh, man, o, he was on o, it. O, o, w Sandow. at the end is not German name. Sandow. It's more Russian. So it, it oh, probably was well, a German Russian. Because Eugene is like oh, well, there you go. Eugene Sandow. So, I mean, yeah, but uh, it's, it's, it's cool. I won. <laughs> So you, you, you know a little something I about that. Totally different. <laughs> I well, that's the information I found online. You know, everything's true on the internet, right? Yeah. But I, I think during, yeah. I mean, D Dennis would probably know, it, you know, on that thing. But yeah, good job, Dennis. You won it. Nice Finally, job. We had it took me what <laughs> three, three, that's right. three, three episodes to win uh, again. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Uh, awesome. awesome. Oh, uh, man. man, one last thing before we go, and this is going to be uh, this is kind of off topic. I do remember, Gunther, when you competed, one thing that always caught my attention was the crazy vein that you have on the inside of your right leg. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever asked you about that. I'm sure it's still there. But what do your kids think about that? And how crazy does it look nowadays? Because I'd always think oh, of all the left. You know what? I got I got rid of that. Did you? And I, I tell you what. Yes. And, and we know, we did kind of like, it's a, it's a procedure that they do. They inject something and it kind of dilutes it, whatever. And um, I tell you what, though, I wish I wouldn't have done it. I really? think if you do that, it messes in a different way. It, about, you, I think your body creates certain veins for blood flow and circulation when it's needed. Right. So I never had that vein. That vein was developed when I literally, my legs got bigger and bigger. So I know also that it got pushed to the outside. You saw it more on the inside. Yeah, it looked terrible and kind of like in a way, but in and you know, in the in the moment you think, oh yeah, great, I got rid of it. But I'm not sure if it necessarily is a better thing for your circulation leg. I don't know. Sometimes I think you shouldn't mess with that anyway. What did the, did the doctors like, tell you, you know, it was it was something that you yeah, needed to have? Because removed? I, I felt like, you know, there was always felt like a pressure on that in that inside okay. after that. So yeah. when, especially when you do like leg presses and then you, you know, you, you know, no, you mentioned 
you have like, I had 1,850 pounds on a damn leg press, 38 plates, and somebody sitting on top on there, and you push it 15 times. So now imagine that blood that has to go through it and pumps and pumps. Do they felt they felt a lot of pressure for the first couple of months? I would even say after the procedure, you know. Did, did you and get that done while what, you were while you were still competing, yeah, or did you get that done after yeah, your career? Yeah, oh, I got really? it done when I was still competing, and oh, I think. Okay. Well, I don't know if it was necessarily a good thing. So that is well, one thing that I sometimes, you know, you have every time you have so many things in life. Maybe I should have done that different. Maybe I should have done that different. But that is one thing I ever think. I don't know if I would do that today. I think not. Actually, you know, who told me who, who said, I, you know, who said, I don't know if I would do that or I would rather not? Tom Prince. Okay. He actually was the one at the time. It was in 2004 when I did it, I think. And I tell you what, I, you know, it was like, uh, you know, anyway, it, then at that time you think, well, when you take pictures, it doesn't look quite as crazy. Tom said, well, that's what the, your body creates those things. And well, bodybuilding is crazy. So it's like, I would just leave it, he said. So he, you know, and, and I, I have to agree at that point, you know, but then again, it's like, you look, you know, well. It's a small thing, I guess. Yeah, well, you just admitted you know, it looked bad or, or crazy. I mean, dude, that's, I guess that's how demented I am. I thought it was sweet. I was like, that's sick looking. And, you know, it made me think of uh, Paul DeLette had the big ones on his <laughs> yeah, shoulder. Yeah, like right in that corner. And, <laughs> but, and dude, I, over, over I've never there, seen anything inside. like that. Gunner, I was like, what the hell yeah. is that? I was like, that's awesome. I want that. You know, I thought it was a muscle at the time. I was like, how do I build that? <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, you probably thought it was, you know, I'm sure everybody yeah, already thought hey, it was when, weird. When I, I thought it was cool. Yeah, well, I say it's funny, but I had my big arms, you know, on my left arm. I swear, you know, that vein here, this one, that was so, that, that was so big. I swear to God, it was as big as my fingers. Yeah, it when added two inches to your arm. You're like literally at 300 pounds. Dude, when that pushes to the outside, my God, I have, sometimes I said, man, that's crazy. That was another thing. It's like just the rain laying on your bikes. It was crazy sometimes. You know, it's like. Yeah. Dennis knows a little something about that. People. (laughs) <laughs> when I train with Dennis sometimes, yeah. man, he'll get the. He still got it. You yeah. yeah. can see it yeah, right there, man. Yeah, yeah. Dennis, sure. Dennis got a sick one, man. Yeah, yeah it's still there. Yeah, he still has the veins popping, huh? <laughs> uh, he's so he's got you, the bus. Are you are you both located in Vegas? No, Zach is I'm in, in Texas. Uh, I'm in Texas. Texas. Oh, are you in Texas? Okay. Yeah, That's I'm in Texas. Come out to Vegas, hey, Dennis. You yes, have to sir. shoot some guns oh, sometimes. Yeah. You're always welcome. I see. I see you are going. I said, yeah. I gotta. Got a DD five. Yeah, thinking so, of going tomorrow. Then, practice a little bit. They have uh, like uh, it's not a competition, but you can, uh, um, you know, shoot on like uh, with time, right? So kind of riding, kind of like a little bit tactical. Oh, cool. uh, yeah, with AK forty seven. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be on Sunday. Oh, nice. Holy yeah, shit. so I'm, I'm thinking of going okay. there. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, okay. that would be nice. Uh, so is it is it outside of Vegas located? Yeah, it's you like uh, forty minutes yeah, from one. from my house here. Yeah, so it's in a desert. It's a uh, it's oh, okay. uh, That's cool. going to uh, yeah. I call it uh, yeah to California like the the uh, fifteen going to California on the left side. It's mm-hmm. like uh, dry lake and stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe I come out sometime. Maybe yeah, you be up. You be up. You maybe go. maybe when uh, yeah. Mario is. Uh, visiting you you know you, you guys decide again to yeah keep the road <laughs> let me know yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice that yeah, will be fun we, we love doing that awesome uh, man, any other stories cool. you guys want to share or we can we can wrap it up man yeah. i appreciate you guys we've been we're about an hour and a half now so we're doing pretty good man but, yeah uh, well you know it's like you still you still have hit it off right away <laughs> i know well you know i did well, push so record things. Yeah, I pushed record, so I okay, got everything. So, so we'll yeah, piece record. it together. But yeah, absolutely. Okay. So and of there's course, so many I'll... things you can talk about, man. Oh, this was awesome, awesome, man. I mean, we could yeah. we could you know call yeah. and just talk on the latest what? show. Shoot, uh, freaking Dennis, we didn't even talk about the Arnold UK. I guess we'll have to do that on another we do episode. Another show, yes, uh, of course. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. awesome uh, having you on uh, our show, Guitar Man. Thank you very much. Much respect. Yeah, and, uh, thanks for having me. I love it, man. Awesome. Awesome. It's we'll, always uh, good, good to go down the memory lane, you yeah, know. Sometimes it's, uh, well, it's like all of a sudden you said, "Man, I didn't think about that." It's like that was a long time ago. Gunther, will you yeah. uh, will you be 
Bobby, you know, do you have any plans of going to the Olympia this year at all in Vegas? Hey, actually, you know, at we were, well, last year, it's like, well, they have it every year, not there in Fort Lauderdale. Hey, I think we would have gone if, uh, you know, it's like my wife and so on. So my wife used to compete too. So we like going there sometimes and, you know, oh, really? go to the expo crazy. and just take yeah. the hoopla, you know. But it's always nice to enjoy it sometimes from a different perspective. Most of the time, the Olympia was like hustling to yeah. the room, eating, hustling to Olympia the expo, was hustling to the show, yeah. yeah, competing, you know. It was like yeah. nonstop. Like, and you know how that is afterwards. You come oh. home, you just... Oh my gosh, I need a vacation. <laughs> yeah. Well, fortunately, you know, Dennis, for uh, Dennis, he's back yeah. in that boat again. I got Dennis working the booth now eight hours a day with me. Uh, well, but, man, I'm saying yeah. if you if you would like to come out, man, we'll have you out. I mean, I'm, we're definitely planning on doing the booth there. and We do the podcast live. Oh, cool, yeah. Um, like well, we did. So I would like, love for you to come so, out and hang out with us, man. That'd be awesome. Do they have the show? Do they have already a date for the show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do they have a date for them? October 6th, 7th. It's the first weekend of yeah, October. Yeah, first weekend of October, yes. Yeah, okay. that'd be awesome. First weekend of October. Yeah. Oh, sure. cool. Yeah, I'll definitely. shoot you a, a, like a message. Actually. So, yeah, so they, they, they used to have it way later. Now it's actually around the same time. Remember, that used to be always yep. October, the week before Halloween. Yeah. They had oh, the, wow, that the Mandalay Bay for years. They had the show at the, and at then the same the time. Back around, end of just September. the week before Halloween. There was end yeah. of September, and my okay. guy was always end of September, and then uh, now they kind of yeah. Uh, yeah November, December, October. So yeah, well, cool. Well, you know, whatever or however it works, right? So I mean, they are promoters; they need to know what fits well. I mean, because I mean, <laughs> we definitely have more shows during the year, so they need to kind of fit into that schedule before the Olympia. So yeah. Yeah. Well, at least it's not in December yeah. anymore. That was ridiculous when ah, we did it right like a weekend before late. Christmas. Uh, I was like, wait too late. Dude, nobody wants to go well, to the week you before know, it's Christmas. Like, did that actually do well? I it's know. like, you know, because I was so confused with it. Well, I was that, like, how can they do it a week before? Year, now, people sometimes, they go already visiting their family. They go in the mountains or, you know, wherever. And I don't know. It, yeah. it, it seemed to be a little bit off. Well, they were. It was the I COVID think, uh, year. They, they did that. Good yeah, for that. the COVID screwed it up, and they're just now getting back to Vegas where it should be. And so, hopefully, everything is back yeah. to normal this year. So, but yeah, that'd be awesome if you could come yeah. out, man. I'd love to meet you in person and and uh, maybe oh, work sure, out with yeah. you guys. I, I'd be a dream for me to work yeah. out with both of you guys. That'd be awesome. We'll get it done. So sure. Yeah. All yeah. right. And the, awesome. And the, what, what is it in the wolves? Yeah. Yeah. Wolf yeah. It's the wolves guys. den. We gotta kill it here. <laughs> well, Albert. Yeah. We'll bring the supplements. Yeah. I'll get are you, you all still, jacked uh, up. You're still always training at home, Dennis? Are you going uh, to flex this you know, gym sometimes? Like mostly or... in the morning here at my place. Uh, but I go sometimes because well, I, you can do I have anything. an athlete. He's uh, doing the uh, Jake Atla show. So I'm, I'm checking on him sometimes in uh, other gyms. Oh, yeah. cool. uh, all right, guys. That's going to wrap up another episode of Big Bad Bodybuilding. We thank our special guest today, Gunter Schlierkamp, for being with us, giving us all those great stories. Don't forget to visit us at nutritionwolf.com and get that 20% off your order with code BBB um, and also get a free t-shirt this week with your order. Um, check us out on our Insta on our uh, Instagram. Um, we got uh, at big bad bodybuilding underscore and at nutrition underscore wolf. So check those out, follow us there and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>